Yeah, yeah. I haven't said anything yet. Maybe I should leave while I'm on top. Have a good day. <laughs> well, thank you all so, so much for coming out on this, uh, this beautiful, beautiful day. You know, uh, we had a saying, you know, if, you, if it ain't raining, you ain't training. <laughs> and so, you know, no one's going to rain on our parade because there is something that we have right here welling up within our souls where we recognize that we are being called upon right now. Our generation and our nation is being called upon right now. We are being tested. Yes. Right now, when we're being put into our lives, we need to recognize the situation. And if you take a look at just physics, when you take a look at what's going on, when you take a look at what it takes to climb a mountain, to walk through a fire, to be tested, you recognize and you realize that the Lord puts these stresses into our lives in order to lift us up. The things that he puts into our lives are intended to lift us up, but if we run away from it, it will overwhelm us. That's right. It will consume us. If we fail to respond to the stresses, if we fail to respond to the enemies coming against us, they will consume us. But if we turn to face into battle, if we turn into face into the wave, then that will lift us up. The same stresses that were put here, the same fears that are put here, are intended to show his glory. That's right. Intended to show what he can do. Because no weapon formed against us can prosper. Right. We need to recognize that we are American, yes. That's who we are. But we also need to recognize whose we are. We also need to recognize that. And that's exceedingly important. So. I don't hide my faith, I hide behind it. Because I tell you, I'm just a man. I'm just a man. And I'm here to serve. And I'm gonna tell you, as, as honest and, and, and as open as I can be here and transparent with my friends and family here today, I don't wanna go to Washington. You look at your phones, you look at your newspapers, you see they're showing up at people's houses, they're tearing up signs, spitting on people. Who would want to stand up and say, me next? But see, I'm old enough to remember when we used to teach our children in school how to think, not what to think. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I have had the opportunity to not only understand what is in the Constitution, but why it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And I recognize that the generations and centuries that came before us were messy, dirty, brutish, and short. And we are part of the 1% who's ever breathed free in this world. And we have the right and the privilege and the honor and the duty and responsibility to choose our leaders. We have that opportunity and obligation. And we have that opportunity and obligation coming up right here in November. Because we understand that if we don't stand up for ourselves, no one will do it for us. I am here to be obedient. I am here because I recognize that we all have an opportunity and obligation to serve. The people who've come before us to sacrifice invested in that dream, invested into this nation, invested into each of our lives. And I'm excited to have the opportunity to do the same thing. But there were times in this country where people didn't just do what they wanted to do. They did what they had to do. And right now, I know that God cares more about my obedience than my convenience. Because there are people out there who are hurting. Literally farmers losing their farms, not knowing what's going to happen the next year. Because they don't have somebody who's willing to buck the party system to get something through. When you're talking about family farms and you have someone representing you who supported Waters of the U.S., who supported the, the death tax, Somebody who doesn't understand business, when 88% of farms are family businesses. And I, we have an obligation to make sure that we're listening to everyone and not placing party politics above the people. I'm looking forward to serving again in Washington the same way that I served in combat. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the background, this, this is actually great to be back in West Michigan. My wife is actually from, uh, from Ada. And so, I found myself a good West Michigan girl. It's perhaps how she could raise two uh, rambunctious boys half one on the way and still keep me in line. <laughs> but uh, I'm exceedingly blessed. And uh, I, I have the opportunity to, uh, to serve again because uh, by the grace of God, a very, very patient wife. Um, 
Look, I, I don't, I, I need you. I started this whole, this the whole thing. My first, my first, uh, I believe it was Reagan Day dinner. Was it Reagan Day, Vanessa? It was a Reagan Day dinner. Uh, it was a Veterans Day last year. And I was talking about how important it was to take care of our veterans. And if you are a veteran and able, please stand and be acknowledged. fallen who are not here um, it's an honor to stand up because um, too many of us too many of us fell through the cracks in the transition too many of us coming back from the battlefield was the toughest battle we faced. And we've been failed by both parties. We need more leadership in Washington, not more partisanship. That's right. We've been, thank you. We've been at war for a decade and a half. We still haven't welcomed our Vietnam vets back home properly. And we currently have a senator who is unaware of our issues, unaware of the homelessness, unaware of the opioid addiction, unaware of the 22 of us who are dying a day, not on her radar screen. That's a dereliction of duty. And it breaks my heart. She should be relieved. That's right, yeah. And that's not a partisan issue, that is a leadership issue. Because. We have people who are being failed all over the state of Michigan. Whether you are a rural white who's been told you're deplorable, or an urban black who's been shown that you're disposable, when you consider the opportunity that we've had, when you consider the last 18 years and you compare with my last 18 years, and you look forward with what we need in terms of leadership and vision and passion for service, and you take a look at the fact that in the past 18 years that I've had, I've graduated from West Point. I went to Ranger School, completed Ranger School, became a Ranger qualified Apache pilot, flew 750 hours combat in Operation Iraqi Freedom. I have the ability to make life and death decisions in a split second, looking out for my men, my weapons, my equipment, understanding no excuses, leaders eat last, and and mission first people always. Come back because I want to serve in my community. Grew my family business by 233%, created 100 jobs coming out of the Great Recession in Detroit and going to serve again. And in that same time frame, Debbie Stabenow's only managed five bills into law, three of which to rename buildings. Who do you want leading for your future? John Jay. It's mission critical, it's time critical. And when you have a senator who votes with Chuck Schumer 95% of the time, and Hillary Clinton 93% of the time. Look, see, like I was saying, this isn't partisan. This is, this is leadership. When you have a US senator who's a solid A, is a, a, a Michigan senator who's a solid A is a New York senator, how does that represent any of us? How does that put our priorities forward? Farmers don't need free stuff. They need a level playing field to get more open markets so they can, so they can sell their, their wares and, and their commodities and their business so they can pass it on to the next generation. Right now I'm talking to farmers who are saying that they're afraid to, to have their kids get into the farm, 127 year old farms, and, and, and it's abysmal. We don't have anybody in the US Senate who will even listen, let alone have the qualifications. And having a combat veteran who understands national security, understands how to take care of our veterans, is necessary. Taking, having somebody who understands business, who understands how to create the economic opportunity, to who make sure that we can um, invest in our teachers, invest in our education, and invest back into our communities all over the state is absolutely important. But I'm not going to get there without you. 
I'm just a candidate. All I can do is pray hard and work hard. I need you. There are people out there who won't even listen to me because there's a, there's a partisan prejudice where now we understand you're not supposed to judge someone by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But they will judge you based upon the letter behind your name without even understanding where you are on things or understand how the, the incumbent has failed them before. If you want the same thing that you've had for the past 18 years, then vote for Debbie Stabenow. If you want burnout buildings in Detroit, vote for Debbie Stabenow. If you want your cherries to keep hitting the ground and your blueberries not to get supported, if you want to not be able to, look, the, the tearing down the dairy subsidies and making uh, a level playing field with Canada, that, that didn't happen because of Debbie Stabenow. That happened because of this administration negotiating a more balanced trade deal to our farmers. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna get down here. We need to open our eyes. We need to be awake and see what they're doing to us. They are literally treating us like children. That's right. They are assuming that we won't think and we will digest every single thing that they put in front of us. No. But we need to be awake. We need to recognize that we are a free people. They have forgotten how to govern a free people. Because when you govern a free people, see the thing is, we have replaced rights and responsibilities with rules and regulations. We have people like Debbie Stabenow in Washington who, who, who are in a position to legislate the future that they're not going to be a part of and who are regulating and legislating industries and they've never run a business before. Debbie Stabenow is running because she can't do anything else and I'm running despite the fact that I can. I am here to serve you. You ask Debbie Stabenow who she's here to serve. You ask Debbie Stabenow what sacrifices she's made. You ask Debbie Stabenow the results that she's gotten. You ask Debbie Stabenow who she reports to. It's not to Michigan. By the number, she reports to her party. She reports to her party. My allegiances are God and country in that order. Amen. And I have a lifetime to show that. To show that. I will tell you in the seat of Ottawa County, I did not pledge allegiance to a president, I pledge allegiance to a flag. Because this country is bigger. We have no kings, we serve God and the people. You recognize that. But she will twist our words to serve her purpose and then go back to Washington and do more of nothing. You recognize that there are lives on the line. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of life and death of our country and our constitution. We need to have people on the floor of the U.S. Senate who understands what it's worth. Who understands how many generations had to sacrifice and die for it. How many people had to die for us to think independently and vote independently, and then we outsource that vote on a straight ticket ballot. We outsource that vote to career politicians who pit Americans against each other, to political pundits who pit Americans against each other, and the pundits keep getting their ratings, the career politicians keep getting reelected, and we the people keep getting screwed. When are we going to wake up? headline you see black Republican this, black Republican that, and see that, that's how they get in your mind. They're even trying to wedge this identity politics into what we're doing. Look, I'm not the black Republican, I'm an American. I fought too long and too hard, and you fought too long and too hard for us to all be American and rise up. They rise up and stand up and say that this country is too good to be divided. We have to stand together and rise up. I'm not going to fit anybody's little red box or little blue box. I'm here to serve everyone. Amen. But we don't have anybody with the skill set. Look, going to combat and recognizing what it takes because the world's becoming a more and more dangerous place. We can't play patty cake with these fools. We need to make sure that we stay powerful. Amen. We need to make sure that our defense department is lethal.
And the people will not miss the bus. We also need to make sure that we have strong alliances globally and we don't create vacuums around the world because the growing spheres of communist influence are coming for us. And you know what they've done? They've sown seeds of discord and dissent in our political system and they're letting it happen. They're letting it happen. They recognize that they could never beat America. They're going to let America beat itself. No the toughest enemy we have is us. Look in the mirror. We're the ones who are not voting. We're the ones who are not talking. We are the ones who are not standing up and cowering in the face of these progressive Marxists who are trying to tear our country apart. The quiet majority? Shame on us. Shame on us. People who've given their lives to have people to... to Protect the Constitution. And we, their children, are cowering in the face of battle. I'm standing up, but I'm, I'm not, I can't do this by myself. I need you. I need each and every single one of you to go out there today and not only tell them what you're doing and why you're voting, but I need you to get more people there. Because without Ottawa County, without Ottawa County coming through, it's going to be a sad state for the state. We need people who understand what is at stake for the state. And, uh, and balance is necessary. We need, not only will we have somebody who can flip the seat, but we can have someone who can flip the script to make sure that we have a younger generation, a more diverse generation, who've never been told the good news, good news, capital G, and the G. <laughs> the good news, who recognize that there are certain areas that are culturally conservative who've never been told what it is to be conservative. Look, both parties have failed. Both parties have failed the American people because they're more concerned with staying in power than they are representing their people. Amen. Look, I'm gonna have six years. I'm either gonna out-negotiate, out-work, or outlive some of those crazies down there. <laughs> No one but you. I am beholden to no one but you. There are over 60,000 individual donors, investors. Many of them are in this room, and I want to say thank you. Because you believe, I don't have the special interest, but meanwhile you have Debbie Stab now, who talks about lowering prescription drug prices, when she was placed in a leadership position in 2002 to lower prescription drug prices. And now she's coming up with this 11th hour legislation and lip service talking about lowering drug prices. Well, where were you in 2002, the first That's time we right. gave you a job? Yeah. But see, now not only has she done that, has she not done that, but drug prices have skyrocketed, and she's taken $400,000 from the pharmaceutical industry and turned her back. Turned her back. And you know what's happened? Prescription drug prices from 2002 to 2018 have skyrocketed, but more importantly, because she was taking the money, from these pill-pushing lobbyists, these special interests, who she turned her back. Overprescription of opioids has led to a crisis that's killing our babies right now. Yeah. In order to put more money in her pocket, she allowed an increase in drug prices that took money out of your pocket. And now she's going to go back to D.C. to do more of it? What has she done in the past 18 years that would lead us to believe that she's going to be any better over the next six? It's time for a change, and it's time for her to go. Well, you know, well, uh, 
So I uh, don't believe the hype. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, if, if you're looking out there and, uh, and you believe in the hype, then you'll lose hope. Yeah. But right now, um, we, have, we have a chance. Not because I'm anything special, but because you are. I, I love you, and I love everybody in this state. And I'm certainly not running to beat Debbie. Listen, you know what I'm running for? Us. What was that? Us. I'm running for... All right, so I'm running for you. I, I don't get out of my bed at 4.35 o'clock in the morning and work all day and get back home late at night to beat anyone. I do it to serve you. You don't wake up every morning and go work hard every single day to beat your competition. You do that to beat your family. And those are the priorities that we don't have on the floor of the U.S. Senate anymore. Not just doing what you're going to say you're going to do, but why you're going to do it. My motivation is not to go to Washington. I'm perfectly happy and content staying right here in Michigan. But I'm doing this because I believe that I'm called to use my blessings and my, my platform to serve the people of God. And that is everyone. That is everyone. So, um, I thank you for your patience. I thank you for listening. I am not going to win this without you. But a win, a win on November 6th is a win for all of us. Democrat, Republican, left or right, black and white, male and female, is going to be a win for Michigan because we'll finally have somebody in the Detroit U.S. Senate who understands what it takes to keep Americans safe because they've done it before, who understands what it takes to help American businesses and American families because they've done it before. And I'm looking forward to flying uh, again because I've done that before and doing it because I'm doing it for you. So thank you so much. God bless you. friends who couldn't be here today. And so we need to send them a little bit of love. And so what we're going to do for our friends at home right now who are watching this, hey guys, thanks for your support. We are going to give them a shout out. And so I'm going to count to three. And I'm going to one, two, three, and I'm going to hear a giant less fly. I apologize in advance, Amanda, the roof's going to blow off the place. We'll all help put it back down. But I'm going to do one, two, three, less fly. Ready? Ready. One, two, Three. Let's fly! Thank you. God bless. Have a great day.